Good morning, everyone. Friday, the 30th of July. I was struck in the readings from morning prayer, always morning prayer. That's because I do this talk after having um, done my daily office, my morning office. And I was struck in the story of um, Acts of how Paul and Silas go from place to place and are continually harassed by, by fellow Jews. But before we come to that, just to, to, to talk about what, what came through to me is very often the complacency within which we live our lives. We become so comfortable with um, the little routines and uh, belief patterns that we have in our life that we are then quite seriously threatened when someone comes in with something a little different. And sometimes it's true to say that the little bubble in which we live our lives, the little thought patterns we have, actually inhibit us from growth. Um, just examples, yesterday in the life of the church, we remembered a man called William Wilberforce, and he was a, a, a very deeply committed Christian and a great orator, and he was persuaded, instead of going into the priesthood, but to go into government, and he became a parliamentarian. And using his oratory skills and his deep conviction, he worked for some 45 years to abolish slavery. He could see that slavery was a system designed not to benefit the slaves in any way, but to uh, benefit the slave masters, who became very comfortable and were highly upset. Many of them would have called themselves Christians, gone to church and been quite, you know, pompous even about how good they were at going to church. But Will, William Wilberforce saw something much deeper, and we recognize that now. And for 45 years, he campaigned against um, slavery and, its, and, and campaigned for its abolishment. And it happened. He brought it about. Unfortunately, he died about a month before the rule was passed in the English Parliament. In, uh, today, we remember Mary and Martha, those two incredible sisters, and, and, and sisters to the brother Lazarus, who Jesus raised from the dead. And Jesus would often be a guest in their homes. And on that one occasion remarkable occasion when Jesus was there and teaching the group. The social custom and the norm was that the women were to be seen and not heard in the kitchen working to prepare a meal for the men who could talk. And, and Mary balked at that and actually sat at Jesus' feet and listened. And then Martha was a little perturbed because she had to do all the preparation on her own. They were both probably uh, committed to Christ and believed in him but nevertheless following the custom. And what's interesting is that Jesus doesn't condemn Martha, but neither, and this is very important, neither does he condemn Mary. And so it seemed to me that Jesus is saying our cultural norms and practices, whilst they're good, cannot stop us from growing in our knowledge and the relationship with the Lord Jesus. And for me, that's, that's an incredible pattern. And Perhaps we see that again in the readings from uh, morning prayer, particularly in Acts, where Paul and Silas are continually harassed, um, mostly by fellow Jews who are, I would suggest, rather complacent in their little bubble of self-exclusion uh, because they were the chosen people and no one else was chosen and, and they could live in their little, their little bubbles. Um, and, and along came Jesus and along came the message of Jesus brought by his people afterwards, which challenged us to think more broadly. Uh, something Mary was doing was allowing herself to be challenged by the teaching of, of Jesus. And Jesus commended that. Um, and so in a sense challenged Martha, why don't you come and sit here and learn something? Um, the pre preparation of food can be done later. So who, and well, rather, how are you complacent in your life and just going on um, and perhaps becoming or permitting yourself to be excluded from growing and developing in the Lord? What is, what is it in your life that, that you've created as a little exclusionary bubble around you? And perhaps the corollary of that question is to say, to what extent have you created that and imposed it on other people. So you're preventing them, inhibiting them from growing in their knowledge and the relationship with the Lord. Um, it's quite a big question, but I think if this is a message, a little word from God, then he will begin to stir something in your thinking and in your heart. Be willing to be challenged by God's Holy Spirit as he says what you have inhibited yourself from doing 
um, and achieving and what you are perhaps inhibiting others from achieving in their lives. Folks, think about this and pray about it over the weekend and we'll chat again next week. God bless. Bye-bye.